second ago, but I want to step back from it because we're going to get dive deeper into the experience you had with Susan. But Rick, when you were feeling these symptoms, can you give us a better uh, picture in our own mind's eye of to what extreme, how is this um, impacting daily life? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it, it was it was debilitating. It, in, in short, I had trouble walking. Um, you know, after I got through the spasms and and the initial X-rays, and I started physical therapy, um, that my biggest challenge was walking. You know, I, I wasn't playing any golf. I wasn't playing any tennis. Uh, I couldn't run. Um, and I'm a guy who's been doing all that stuff for the last, you know, my whole life, I guess. Let's say. Yeah. And so. I was able to kind of get through some walks, you know, the medication helped, uh, but it's, it's a funny story we, we do tell around here. So the middle of February timeframe, I was about 40 minutes into a walk and I literally called my wife and said, could you please come pick me up? Mm. The pain through my, um, uh, well, at that point it was both front and back, but both quadri quadriceps and glutes and hamstrings uh, was in so intense, I couldn't, um, have a natural walking movement. My leg, it was, it, it, you know, I had a great appreciation for all those people who suffer from nerve damage. You know, when you, when you hear stories about people's nerves are so damaged that the body just doesn't function right. And as a guy who's been an athlete his whole life, I mean, that was, I mean, that was terrible. I mean, and I'm trying to, I'm making all kinds of deals with God. I'm doing everything, you know, like if I can just learn to walk again without pain, I'm in a good place. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll give up tennis. I'll give up golf. I, get, you know, I just want to walk at this point. Yeah. Um, so um, at times tingling at times, you know, sharp uh, pain, but I, I would say more than anything, it was just this inability to have a natural normal stride. You know, my, my legs just weren't working. So, so your form, your capabilities of taking normal strides, maybe you even look different to your wife or others that could see you walk when you were having that trouble, obviously, was it an actual distance as well? I mean, were you, did you have to sit down in order to get relief? And did, was that premature to where you would normally be able to walk longer? Y yeah, I, I, sitting did give me relief, uh, which I guess is, if I remember correctly, maybe counter to um, stenosis. I think it was one of the tip-offs to Susan that my problem was more about bulging discs than it was stenosis. We'll talk about that oh, in a second. I, yeah. know Susan, <laughs> I, I hear you, Susan. Get, give it a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, I get I get relief from sitting down. Um, the stretches that the the PTs, you know, were giving me. Um, it was walk us of, through we, that, Rick. I'm walk hard. us through that conventional physical therapy. What all were you doing? Yeah, it was a, it was a, just a bunch of, bunch of stretching, right? Uh, you know, in, you know, the prayer position, getting on your side and then, and then br bringing your one side of your body over, holding it for a count of 10 and bringing it back and doing that 10 times, right? Mm -hmm. And we started on the right side of my body because it was more painful on my right side than my left side. Then we, we eventually, you know, included the left side. Um, it was all, you know, it was all flexion. Right. I mean, it, you know, we, we weren't doing bridging of any kind. Uh, um, first of all, I couldn't I couldn't do bridging. That was one of the tip offs in doing Pilates that something was wrong. Was that bridging is a big thing in Pilates. And and I could feel that pain get go through my quads when, when I would do something like that. Yeah. So um, with the stretching, massage, they did some dry needling, yeah. uh, dry needling. I found, you know, gave you gave you some relief on the spot. Yep. Okay. It just wouldn't last. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like taking a pill and, and uh, you feel better for a bit, but then, you know, the pain comes back. Sure. Um, and so it's one of those things where you, you, you wake up each morning saying, okay, hopefully I'm a little bit better today. And I wasn't having that experience. I'm like, no, gosh, it's the same as I was feeling yesterday. Yeah. And then I just kept going through the routine. So, you know, it was, you know, again, an hour at the PT office, um, I yep. guess the first eight to 10 minutes, I, I was on a stationary bike. Right. Then a little massage work and then um, a series of maybe three or four different kind of stretches, you know, okay. three sets of 10 or three sets of 30, depending on what I was doing. Yep. Uh, but it was a lot of twisting, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, now that we know what we know, maybe I was even aggravating what my real, the real reason for my pain. 
right? Do you remember feeling like you were feeling better in the midst of doing that at those sessions or leaving there? No. Okay. You felt the <laughs> and, same. And, and I'm inclined. I'm one of those guys. I'm inclined to say, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel, Oh yeah, no, I'm okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, 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 you know, got to the point I, I gave it two months. Now, I was going to say that's argue pretty patient. That I need to give it longer. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, you know, when I worked with Susan, it took us six or seven weeks. Be, be, you know, but with Susan, I was getting better, right? But it was right. six or seven weeks before we had that aha moment. You know, in McKenzie, when you guys talk about, you know, the 24 to 48 hours of no pain, it took us a while to get there. Sure. Um, of course, we may have been undoing all the wrong stuff I've been doing for the previous Hear the entire episode for free on iTunes, Spotify, other favorite podcast players, or go to mechanicalcareforum.com.